Hi everybody, it's Robbie from Southern California and I'm going to do another Q&A on hummingbirds since there's so many questions always coming in. I'm here but I'm going to let you look out the window and hopefully the hummingbirds will keep coming in. They've been coming in all morning. I just refilled the feeders and they're almost ready to be filled again. So I'm going to go through questions as quick as I can and try to keep this as short as possible. I can't go through every question, but I'll go through a lot of them because a lot of them have been duplicate questions. So I'm gonna let you enjoy the hummingbirds as I go through the questions. Okay, I've had questions on, which has nothing to do with hummingbirds. Can you try to hand feed the birds like scrub jays and orioles? I'm gonna say no. Even though when I was a kid, yes, I did have a pet scrub jay that used to come and take food out of my hand. He was taking sunflower, but um, that was a long time ago and they're very wild. I haven't bothered with them. The Orioles are very timid when it's around people, even though the young ones will come very close to you and they'll feed out of the hummingbird feeder. But no, I'm not even gonna try that. A uh, lot of Oriole questions. Uh, they want to know if Orioles, um, if I feed them oranges or jelly. I have not put jelly out, I will not. I will say I did try to split some oranges and put them out there and they had zero interest in the oranges. So no, they love the sugar water and then they forage for a lot of insects in the wild. So I just let them do their insect thing and they can feed out of the different feeders I put around for the Orioles. I've got those ice cream containers I made a feeder out of, they love those and a bowl, even just a bowl with, with something covering the top, maybe to keep the bees out, they'll drink sugar water right out of a bowl. Uh, do I boil the water when I'm making the hummingbird food? No, not the, all the water. The only water I boil is the small amount in the beginning I add in to melt the sugar so the sugar becomes clear and becomes part of the water. It's really easy, anybody can do it. I use a glass Pyrex, a cup. You can use a good plastic one. There's good uh, cooking plastic ones you can get too, whatever one you want to use. One cup white sugar. Now it can be beet or cane sugar. It doesn't matter. A lot of times it doesn't say on the package. Either one is fine, but it must be white sugar. No raw sugar and no honey. Honey's got bacteria in it that can be detrimental to their health, just like infants. So you don't want any honey ever. One cup of boiling water, because it's going to be one part sugar, fork parts water. One cup of boiling water. If your glass is not heat, you know, good for heat, then use a plastic, a good heavy duty plastic one, or get a good glass one. Stir it up. It dissolves very quickly. And look at that. It's all dissolved. Now what you're going to do is slowly add in three more cups, and I use tap water. If you can drink your tap water, it's fine for the birds. So that's one, two, three. A quick stir, and you're done. You don't have to boil all the water. And the reason you don't have to is, first of all, if you put too much boiling water in and you don't follow it with cold water, you can actually kind of burn the sugar. So you don't want to really do that. You can add in the boiling water and then top it with the rest you need as regular tap water or cold water, whatever you want to do. They don't need to be boiled because there's no reason for it. Remember, they're drinking out of sprinklers. They're drinking out of hoses. They're getting water from your yard. You don't have to worry about any mold that's growing in there because the mold that is growing in the sugar water is actually brought in by them because they're foraging around the garden, they're picking things up and they're getting into everything and they pick up mold on their own beaks and then it ends up, you know, in those water and that's what grows the mold. It's not the water you're putting in there or the sugar. It's them going back and forth, all the different birds feeding from it. And that's why you get a little bit of black mold in there. You just wash it off. So no, what I do on my formula is since I make eight cups of water, I already have a bowl that I use. And yes, it's a plastic food grade bowl. But the thing is, I put in two cups of sugar for my recipe. Then I add in a little bit of boiling water and stir it until it gets clear. And it literally takes seconds. And as soon as it's clear, I top it. So I have eight cups of water for my two cups of sugar. 
and that's it. So it's not like I'm boiling at all. So no, you don't need to. A lot of people love the videos. Thank you so much. I want to keep trying to get this up there because so many people are interested in hummingbirds. I was asked if hummingbirds eat bees and wasps. No, they don't eat bees. They eat little fruit flies and small little insects, aphids in your garden. They eat that, but no, they they don't they don't even like the bees when the bees get into their hummingbird feeders they kind of fly around very upset but they'll still go to it even if there's some bees there and there's been a lot of people getting bees on their hummingbird feeder if you are getting bees then you need to switch to a hummingbird feeder that has like those yellow flowers on it because what it is is it makes sure that the hole is small enough only for the hummingbird to feed on and this way, the bees cannot reach the sugar water. If they can't reach the sugar water, the uh, the honeybees, then they're not going to go back and tell everybody from the hive, hey, I found it, because they'll never find it from the beginning, so you won't deal with it. We Sometimes they bother my feeders, the ones I have bigger holes in for the Orioles, and sometimes they don't. I guess it depends on how much they're finding around the yard. But if you do have a bee issue, just get one that has the bee guard. They call them bee guards. They're already on the feeder. And the ones behind me have small holes and the bees don't bother the ones in the window. But that's what you'll need if you're, if you're dealing with bees. A lot of people are having ant problems. If you're having an ant issue, that is actually very easy to get rid of. You want something that is, uh, your feeder is going to hang to that has water in it. And you can buy, let me get something. You can buy online. I've seen them on eBay. They're called ant moats. And I'm going to switch you back to me for a minute. I make these. I use a plastic cup. And you can make them any size you want. This is just a plastic cup. I made a hole on the bottom. I strung a piece of wire through. And then I put a little bit of tape there. And I filled it with aquarium sealer. Once it's got aquarium sealer, it will hold water in it. And you hang your hummingbird feeder from here. You hang this up wherever you need to hang it. You fill the cup with water and the ants can't get across to it. Remember, it only takes one ant to find this. Once the one ant finds it, the scout, he goes back and tells everybody, hey, I found the hummingbird feeder full of sugar. But if he can't find it, he's not going to go tell anybody. So that's the whole idea is just to stop the single ant that's going to get on there to tell everybody. These work great. Now, this is plastic. Like I said, I made it. I even made some with really long wire to it, depending on if I want to reach a tree or something. You know, the thing is, like I said, these are plastic and eventually they will crack. I make them with little animals in it, see? But, the, but you can get them on eBay, the metal ones or they're copper, and they'll last forever. Those will last forever. You just fill it with water. Some people say they fill it with oil and different things. Uh, some people say they fill it with what you really don't need to just fill it with water That's all you need. Just make sure it's a good size little cup there fill it to the top with water See they can't cross it They can't get to here and once they can't get to here they can't go down Make sure your hummingbird feeder that you hang from here is not leaned up on any Bushes or plants or they'll crawl across the plant to get to it. So it's free hanging and they work fantastic that's all you need for any type of ant so that's how you get rid of the ants it's called an ant guard and it works really really good more people want to know about fountains i am going to get a lot up on fountains i do a lot of solar fountains and yes and there are certain fountains that hummingbirds like and certain ones that they don't i will get to that they like something that they can really lay on and scrub because they go into flowers and get pollen on them and different nectars on them and they want to wash that all off. So they like something that's shallow that they can get in and scrub. Otherwise, they like to fly through the sprinklers. They really like sprinklers too. Sometimes I'll be hosing out in the garden and they will fly back and forth and back and forth. It's so funny because they're just flying to get through the water. I know there's no hummingbirds in Australia. Gary's always told me that. But you got uh, honey eaters. I don't know if they'll eat out a hummingbird fear. Oh, somebody asked me about the sugar. They're getting the pink bag and they saw my bag was blue. Don't worry about what the bag looks like on the sugar. The sugar is granulated white sugar. Cane sugar is the best. 
I I got mine at Walmart for like $8.50 a bag and it was 25 pounds of sugar. They raised the price. They, it goes up and down. So keep an eye out if you're in the United States. They've been raising it and lowering it. And it seems like when I buy a lot, then they raise it, then they lower it. Um, the pink bag is probably CNH, which is cane sugar. And that is really good. But if it's sugar beet or beet sugar, you can use that. Um, some people say it's not as good, but it's fine. It's the sucrose. They can only digest sucrose. And that's what white sugar is. So the beet, the sugar beet or beet sugar is fine if you want to use that. Sometimes it is cheaper. I personally look for cane sugar. And like I said, I have used CNH. It's excellent. There's a lot of other very good brands. And by the way, I did some research on the sugar from Walmart. And it's the same company that packs a lot of famous sugars, including CNH. So a lot of the sugars are coming from the same company. Just because of the wrapping, it doesn't mean anything. So don't worry about the color. Just make sure it's pure sugar it's granulated sugar no powdered sugar that has cornstarch in it that could kill them no brown sugar that has molasses in it they cannot metabolize that no agave that will kill them if they drink that and you know you may say well that you saw them drink it and they're great well it'll shorten their life very quickly so you don't want to give them anything the only thing they can digest is sucrose we can't go out in a field and graze on grass right out of the ground we wouldn't be able to digest green grass i'm not talking about vegetables well they can they can only digest sucrose it's kind of that situation that's where the way their body is and it, don't worry about diabetes remember their heartbeat is about a thousand pumps per minute and that's why they need that sugar at night it drops down to 50 to 100 but during the day, that heartbeat has to keep racing that fast. And that's what keeps their wings beating and the way they move. And that's why they need that. And that's the way their little bodies are built. They're designed for sucrose, which they get out of the nectar of flowers. That's exactly what the flowers are producing. Somebody brought uh, the hummingbirds. And, oh, the hummingbird feeders, I see, brought some bees to their area where they have papaya trees and now they're having fruit. Yeah, it will. It will attract the bees if they can get into it. Uh, somebody else asked me, why didn't I mention non-GMO sugar? All cane sugar is non-GMO. Sugar beet is GMO. The amount of sugar that they're actually drinking from sugar beet isn't, from what I have done research, is not going to affect them. They would rather have something than nothing. If, if people put out the sugar beet and they drink that and they can't find something else, they will survive fine. That's the, that's the reason I haven't really brought it up. But if you want non-GMO, get any type of cane sugar because canes have not been GMO'd yet. Sugar beet has, but again, that is better than nothing because if they can't find enough food by the end of the day, they perish. They're not a bird of prey that only has to eat once or twice a week. A parrot that can get sick and go for days without eating. They can't do that. If they don't have sugar or get their enough food in their body, they need half their body weight, they will not survive the night and they will be gone the next day. So that's why I don't worry about whether it's GMO or not. That is totally up to you. Some people say they're wasting sugar water because they're disappointed they're not getting enough hummingbirds. Again, if you don't, and I've talked about this a lot, you can make a cup, which is one cup of water to a quarter cup of sugar. Keep it in the fridge. It'll last for a good week or more in the fridge. Put out a small amount in the hummingbird feeder, just a little bit. Just put a small amount out. It's my neighbor. And... Let's see if it's going to stop. It did. Okay, good. Just put a small amount out. And, you know, if it, in three four days they don't feed on it, take it down, wash it, put a small amount out in there. But the thing is, just don't make that much. Like I've, I've also brought up, a few years ago, we had one or two hummingbirds. We only had, five years ago, I was putting out feeders and getting just a couple hummingbirds. And now they've produced so much and they know they have all the food they need here and they can survive here. They know that they can take off for miles. They come in in the morning, feed, and then they can leave. They fly so fast and they can go so far and they can leave and go miles away and they know they can come back and always find food here. 
So once they find your place and they know that you've got a lot of food, that's when you'll start to see more and more hummingbirds if they're in your area. And they're pretty much all over the United States. Certain times of the year, you know, when the snow is coming, they're not there, but then they're there in spring and summer. And they don't like the snow and they don't like the super cold. So keep that in mind. That's when they, they move in warmer areas. Somebody wrote, okay, and they live in Tucson, Phoenix, Pharaoh of Egypt. Uh, and they didn't see hummingbirds. Now they put the recipe out and they're getting a lot of hummingbirds. That's because they found it, they like it, and they have a fantastic memory. And they will remember where the hummingbird food is. So they know that they can go out, forage, and come back. And that's all it takes is once they know, they will come back because they are they have to be smart. They're one of the smartest birds. Um, another person asked me, they said they've been putting in vanilla flavoring in their hummingbird feeders. And she said her hummingbirds love it. I'm going to have to say on that, no, 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 no. The smallest amount of vanilla flavoring can actually be detrimental to their lives. Vanilla flavoring is 35% alcohol, pure alcohol. And if they drank enough of that every day, they took a small amount, it, what will, it will do is destroy their kidney and liver. So instead of living a normal life for five or six years, they might live six months. So you want to not use vanilla flavoring. You don't add anything into it. They don't need it. And they most certainly do not need alcohol in their bodies. So, and by the way, if anybody sees the videos I've put up and you think they're drinking beer, they are not drinking beer or soda. Those are all hummingbird feeders I've made. I make hummingbird feeders out of everything now. They just love it. They want to see what I'm going to bring out next and they try it and it's just adorable. I only feed the recipe that I put up, which is a quarter to, to one. So it's a quarter cup of sugar to one cup of water. But please, no no flavoring you don't need flavoring they're not looking for flavoring all they're looking for is the sucrose so their heart can keep the rate up that they need that's what they need and that's what they want it would be wonderful if they could forage and find enough but remember flowers only have so much nectar in them so you may see them feeding and feeding and think oh you've got 20 hummingbirds feeding on your bushes well that's not a hummingbird feeder. So once that flower is empty, it's empty. All they're doing is wasting their energy looking and foraging for food. That's why they need to know that there's some sort of feeder around. So when they've gone and checked 30, 40 flowers and there's nothing in it, they know they can come back to you and get something to eat and then go back and forage until they can find the flowers that are full of nectar form or pollen or insects. They also go into the flowers looking for insects. Now, some people said that they've had a lot of hummingbirds around in the past, and this year they have not. Well, the problem is they may be in your area, but they might have found somebody. It could be a block away from you. It could be your next door neighbor. Somebody putting out a lot of feeders. And once they find those feeders and they know it's reliable, they will only go back to where they know they can go to get their food. So if you have a feeder up and you let the feeder run empty and they come back and check it and it's totally empty, they may not come back if they find your neighbor's got a feeder and theirs is always full. In other words, I've got, I've got a dozen plus feeders around. So they always know if the ones behind me out the window are empty, they can go to another feeder. They always know that some feeder around here has got food. So that could be the reason why you had a bunch and then you didn't. Not because they're not around, but the problem is they're not going to your house. They might be going to somebody else's house. And it could be just, just a fluke that somebody else put it out. There were plenty of food for them. And then the little group that's in the area, it could be 50, 100. They decided they're going to hang out there. And again, they go where they know there's food. They have to have food to survive all day. And so that's where they're going to go. So just keep putting it out and just make sure there's always a little bit of food. Like I said, if it runs empty and they find it somewhere else, well, then that's where they're going to go. Uh, again, more people asking about bees. That just means that your hummingbird feeder you're using is a couple of things. Probably the hole's too big so the bees can reach down and feed. If they can reach down and feed, 
then yes, the bees will come around them. So you'll need a hummingbird feeder out certain times of the year. You know, the bees aren't always looking for hummingbird food. And you know, they have a bee guard on them. The other thing is to make sure they're hanging really straight. If the hummingbird feeder is hanging in an awkward position where it's kind of tilted, you may have some of the sugar water dripping out slowly or very close to the hole, too close to the hole, where they can still reach it. So just make sure the hummingbird feeder is hanging really straight. That would be the main thing. And again, if you put bee guards on, you're not going to have Orioles coming because if the, the Orioles probably on some of the bee guards, they cannot get to it. Especially some of them have like a little yellow plastic cage looking cap that goes over them. They can't get their beak into that. So if you don't have Orioles, then just make sure that you have a bee guard on your, and they come with it. Every feeder is different. You can't just go buy a bee guard and put a bee guard on. You have to get a hummingbird feeder that either has small holes or has a bee guard on it. The other thing, red dye causes cancer. No, it does not cause cancer. I don't know where this is coming from, but all the research I have done, even through the biggest hummingbird societies, they don't like the red dye, but it, from everything they have found, it hasn't really caused the problem because there's no alcohol in there. There's no nothing in there. It's usually people putting in one drop and they get such a small amount of the red dye that it really doesn't cause them cancer. But the issue is here, you don't need it. They're not looking for it. The red dye is strictly for you to see if your feeder is full. So just keep a closer eye on it. Even behind me, you can see which feeders are starting to empty and you can see which one is almost full. You don't need to put any red dye in. It, it's, it's, it's a waste, it's just a waste. You don't need it. I do know that most of the hummingbird food that you buy in the stores, the pre-made ones, do have red dye. And a lot of them are even recommended by certain organizations. So just, you know, you do what you want. Don't worry about the cancer, but don't use the red dye. You really don't need it. It's just, it's a waste of money, waste of time. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't use it. Uh, people are buying the hummingbird feeders from the dollar stores. Yes, Dollar Tree, 99 cent store. They've been getting in the feeders. Those are the best feeders. The, to me, they're worth a million dollars over all the others. Really, they're the best feeders you can find. They come apart. Everything comes apart. You can take the bottom off. You can take it off the, the bottle. You can get a toothbrush in there or something in there, wash it up really good. Some of the most expensive feeders, the base is attached to the point where you can't take the base apart to clean it. So where the flowers are, you can't get inside, you can't clean it. And those get moldy in there. And no matter what you, you can't clean it with vinegar. You have to put bleach and water in there and you have to shake it and try to get it out. I had a few of those and it was a waste. I don't buy those anymore. Check your feeders that you're buying. If they don't come apart the base where you can wash them out. I like washing a lot of mine, scrubbing it with baking soda and a sponge and or a toothbrush and then rinsing it really good. If you have to, a little tiny bleach and water, a few drops of bleach in, in a cup of water is fine. Think of it, you people use it, whatever you use for yourself to wash is fine to use for them, whatever you want to use. But the main thing is that you can take it apart and that you can scrub it if you see, you know, a lot of black mold grow on it and it gets dirty. So just clean it up really good. And again, I love the feeders from the dollar store. I will have to admit, Walmart has got great feeders too. They're only like three, four dollars and those come apart. The only thing on them this year, and I don't know why that company did it, and it's a USA company, and I'm going to have to say shame on them. They made the slits so thin that I have had the problem where my hummingbirds here would not use them. So I had to take a soldering iron and I had to make the slits wider. You can use a hot knitting needle, hold it over a flame and open it up. I would never use them like that because if they're sitting on the pedestal and another bird came by and they moved, they can snap their beak. I heard that they were finding some with broken tongues in one city and, and issues. And I'm wondering if that was the feeders that they were using. I would never use those. I put it out the first time without thinking earlier this year and the hummingbirds would come stick their beak in and then they jump back and they didn't want to use it. And I looked at it and realized they were paper thin holes. Now maybe some of them were faulty and they made a mistake, 
I don't know because there was another feeder a few years ago that a company came out with and the hole wasn't done correctly and there were a lot of hummingbirds killed. So many hummingbirds died over it. They apologized for it. So I don't know what the issue was this year. Look it over. Make sure the hole looks ni like it's nice and clean. They can get their beak in. And if you get the ones with the tiny little slits, see if you can enlarge it for them. I know they were trying to keep bees out, but you don't need it that tiny. People, again, asking if you need to boil the water. The only part you need to boil is just to initially get the sugar to melt. You can use tap water, you know, room temperature, but it seems to take quite a while. It's very foggy, so it takes time until the water uh, and the sugar become one, because that's what happens. It becomes one. So I start it with boiling water, and then I quickly add in tap water to it. And yes, I use tap water. I don't use bottled water. Remember, they're drinking out of the sprinklers. They're drinking out of the street gutter. They're drinking wherever they can find water in some areas. If you can drink your tap water, they can drink your tap water because they already are. And then there were a lot of people asked me about, um, there was the uh, hummingbird that nested on my window and the whole window was covered in poop. Yes. Why did that happen? Some people ask because the, in the beginning, very beginning, the babies, when they poop, it looks like a little sack, a tiny little sack. And mom picks that up and throws it somewhere. She takes it away from the nest and she dumps it somewhere. As they get older and the more she's feeding them, now she can't be dumping it all day. So what they do is they back up when they're in the nest and they shoot it out wherever. Just so happens up against my wall, it landed on the wall and, and the screen of the window but it kept their nest clean. They want to keep in the wild their nest clean. I mean, think about it. You see that whole window, they would be sitting on three feet of poop. So that's what they're doing. They're keeping their nest clean. And like I said, in a tree, it would just be going on the leaves. It would be going down to the ground. It would disappear. And I'll tell you, once the babies are gone, it's dry, it brushes right off. So it was all is good. You take the good with the bad and it was fine. It wasn't that bad. Okay, somebody told me they went and bought a fountain. They purchased a little fountain that was globe shaped. That's perfect. The water's running all, all over it. That's exactly what they love. They love something that's a ball. They just love the, the water trickling down so they can scrub themselves. Another person said they have a problem that the sugar water goes bad before the hummingbirds drink it. Well, if you're in an area where it's really hot and you're putting it out in the hot sun, yeah, they, they, you know, the hot sun can make it go bad quicker. Do I? And I know people have asked me, do I put it out in the sun, put it in the shade? I have it all over. Some of the hummingbirds like to drink, be drinking out in the sun. I mean, that's where the flowers are growing out in the sun. Some of them like the shade. And when it's raining, I make sure the hummingbird feeders are covered. Because if rainwater gets in them, they won't drink it. Once it dilutes down, they won't drink it. So I keep the hummingbird feeders covered for two reasons. One, so the hummingbird nectar does not dilute and two so they don't have to be eating and sitting out in the rain somebody wrote that the sugar water gives them high calories that they need to burn absolutely that's what they need that's the way their metabolism is built we do not have a heartbeat of a thousand beats a minute they do and that's what they need somebody said i didn't say the ratio of the sugar i did i always say the ratio of the sugar uh, again it's basically one part sugar, four parts water. That's all you have to remember. So I use, so if you're going to make four cups, you're going to use one cup of sugar to four cups of water. Don't compensate for the one cup of sugar. The, if you mix one cup of sugar into four cups of water and you remeasured it, you're going to end up with four cups total. The sugar and the water become one. Don't ask me how it's science. That's the way it works. That's why it's always for a quarter to one so it's a quarter cup of sugar to one cup of water or two cups of sugar to eight cups of water i've got the recipe all over i can write it out but it's four to one somebody said nobody should buy it you know there are some people that buy it only because uh they don't have any ways or means of making it and that's why they buy it you know they may rent a room and they want to hang a hummingbird feeder out so i understand that so you can buy it if you have to and I would not add anything. I would not add Kool-Aid. There's chemicals in Kool-Aid. I don't know what that would do to them. 
because their bodies cannot take that. So don't add anything. You don't need to add anything at all. No Kool-Aid, no juices. Some people add juice. Somebody added the juice and the hummingbirds stopped coming. So that's probably why. Some of them are smart enough to know there's something wrong or they drank it and they didn't like it and they didn't come back or they died. Sometimes they might take some. You don't see, you're not sitting by your feeder all day. You don't know how many are coming. And then they just don't come back for multiple reasons. So keep that in mind. If you've got a few hummingbirds, I would, um, I would definitely have two feeders out with the smallest amount of food. This way you always have food out there. And that's the whole idea is you want them to find your place and you want them to start coming. And again, don't let those hummingbirds, don't let two of them run empty. Because if they do and they find it from a neighbor, they won't come back. A lot of times they won't. The only time they'll come back to you is if your neighbor forgot to fill them. Honeysuckle is wonderful for hummingbirds. We have all kinds of flowers growing around the property and they love their flowers. The moringa flowers from the moringa trees, all the uh, vegetables I'm growing have flowers. They use that, you know, their broccoli, your collard, your kale. They actually feed off of those flowers as well. Some people like to add dish soap to the uh, ant guards that are there. They say that helps. That's fine if you want. I always worry about adding anything to the ant guards because what if a hummingbird or a bird came by and wanted to take a drink of water? They think it's water. So I'm very careful on what I, I just add water, but you know, everybody else can do what they want. Organic cane sugar, as long as it is the white sugar. They cannot process down raw sugar. Their body cannot process it. All they need is the sucrose. So if it's brown, no. That means they cannot drink that. They cannot process it. The white granulated sugar is sucrose. And that's what they need. Because that's the only thing their body can process. That's why you have to remember. It's that simple. And if, you know, with some people saying, oh my gosh, you're killing the hummingbirds by giving them sugar water. I guess that's why it went from two hummingbirds to thousands now in the area. Believe you me, I'm not killing them. It's the only thing is they're all surviving. That is the difference. And I'm hoping some of my neighbors put out feeders as well, because normally in the wild, they would produce two to six babies in a year. They may not produce six if they don't have enough food. They may only do one nest. If there's not enough food, they won't produce as much. But instead of a lot of the weaker ones dying or the ones that can't find food are dying, they're not dying. They're all pretty much living. There's some dying. They're always going to die in the wild. There's going to be accidents. They fly into something. Something grabs them. You know, just things happen. But so many of them are surviving and having babies that their numbers have built up tremendously. So that's what's going on here is because they have plenty of food. They have more food than they need. And that gives them the opportunity to go out and forage in the wild everything that they could possibly need so they they can do it both ways and that's what's so great so just um you know keep that in mind that gives them the opportunity when they know you're reliable and that's why they'll try any of my crazy bird feeders i put out there they know i'm reliable they know who i am they will follow me around the yard even if somebody else is around they will follow me and i've heard the stories from other people who are feeding them and they know that you are reliable and you are keeping them alive. They're, like I said, they're one of the most intelligent birds that you could possibly, possibly have around. What is, oh, somebody asked what the big thing is on top of my feeder. We have some feeders out on the deck and it, what it is is just tops of buckets or plates and we made some holes and that's in case it rains. So this way the feeders won't get rained on. That's all. I have a lot of feeders. I just change them around when it's raining and put them under the eaves or in areas under trees. So this way they won't get rained on. Like I said, if it gets rained on the feeders and water gets in them, it gets diluted, they won't drink out of it. And yes, now we have hummingbirds all year round. Before I never saw them in the winter. And now that they know that there's food here, yes, they we have them all year round in large numbers now. Some people said that they have couple hummingbirds they won't share. Well, they don't always share here too. And they fight. They, you know, they're small. And in their mind, you know, they're trying to protect the feeder. And, you know, the feeder to them is like their flower. And the problem is the numbers are so big, they can't fight everybody off. That's pretty much it. 
If they're fighting a lot and that means you have a bunch of them around, just put more feeders out. I have noticed that sometimes they try to protect the feeders more so during the day. And then as evening comes before the sun goes down, they stop that because I guess in their mind, the flower is almost gone. There'll be a new flower tomorrow. And they seem to share more in the evening because they're all rushing to load up in the evening on their sugar water and then go to sleep somewhere. This way they're strong enough in the morning to wake up and start to forage again. And what they do is they tend to come here and load up here. So I think I've gone through a whole lot of questions that have come in the other day on uh, my story. And I sit and I tried to go through that. I have different hummingbird ones that come up. I know a lot of them are the same questions, but it, I guess it doesn't hurt to go over them. Some people wanted to know about the Hervé story. And I mentioned it very briefly in there about the owl that he brought me. It is a funny story. Um, and I wanted to emphasize the reason is that owl went for about five, six days without any food. And that owl, yes, I had to hand feed it and tube feed it for months. But it lived and it was totally blind. It had lost one eye. The face was smashed. But it became his closest pet. He loved that owl. He had it for so many years. I think he brought it on the Dinosaur Show, too. He brought me, too. But I wouldn't go on the show. And um, he loved that owl. And yes, I managed to keep that owl alive. Technically, you know, everybody wanted to put it down. Hervé wanted that owl so bad. He felt he found it and he wanted to give it life. And he did, you know, he did. He, he would play the piano in the house and the, that owl would fly to him. Even though it was totally blind, it knew him. There's so much. And the guy was a wonderful, wonderful guy. And he had a heart of gold and he loved animals more than anything. So with that, I think I've answered a lot of questions. I'll come back and do another Q&A. It's quiet right now. We're like 90 degrees. So the hummingbirds are now hiding in the trees. So have a great day. I hope I got more questions answered. And I'll keep doing more of these Q&As. And hopefully we can get everybody to understand what's going on. Have a great day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye.